Today we're going to be taking a look at what I consider to be one of the best resources out there for preparing for the Part 107 Drone Certification Exam. And it's, it's web-based, so we're going to start by going to a certain website here. What you want to do is just open up Google and search for King's 107 Practice Test. Go ahead and search for that. And you should see a result that looks something like this, free FAA Part 107 Drone Pilot Test. And it takes you to this site here. Now, I got my certification almost, uh, it was about a year and a half ago. And I remember I, I posted a reaction video shortly after taking the test, you know, in the parking lot. And I mentioned this resource as, you know, one of my primary, you know, methods of preparing to pass that exam. I got an 83%, by the way, which you need 70% to pass. So I passed and then some, you know, I could have done better, but, you know, I passed. That's all that really matters. But anyway, I want to take a little bit more time today to talk about this resource because I have revisited it you know revisited it recently and I have a feeling that they added even more questions to the question banks it's still just as user-friendly as it was you know a year and a half ago and it's still just what I consider to be one of the best resources out there so let's take a look and dive a little bit into the King's practice test here just to show you how um, I would recommend you use it to prepare for your own you know taking of that test so on this main page here, and do make sure that it's the part 107, they do have another version of this for, you know, a manned aircraft. So you want to be sure that you're in the drone version with that part 107 at the top. And you want to scroll down until you see this screen here. Now, it tells you a little bit about the actual assessment, you know, 60 questions and you have 120 minutes. So basically two minutes per question and you have to get a 70% to pass. Now, you can choose how many questions it generates for you on this practice test. The default looks like it's 10 right here. You can change it to way more than that. Um, you can take up to 60, which would be, you know, the actual or authentic number of the test. So let's go ahead and I'm going to start with 60. That's fine. And if you want to have the most authentic testing experience possible, you're going to want to check all of these categories. These are all the possible, you know, options for everything that could show up on the actual Part 107 exam. So if you're looking for an authentic test or as authentic as possible, you're going to want to check everything and do 60, start the test, time yourself. And there is a timer on the test, which you'll see. Um, and that's going to give you the most kind of realistic representation of how prepared you are toward reaching that threshold of 70% for the passing score. But anyway, there's a little more to it than just a practice test here. There are a couple things that you can do to really get more out of this. And I wanna show you some of those things. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and just generate a test here. Now, this is a 60 question multiple choice test. You can see that the, the way that the questions are worded, if you've done any work preparing for this exam already, you'll recognize this right away. And notice that there are only three choices. That's the way the actual exam is. So you have a one in three chance of guessing correctly. And you'll notice that when it's referring to figures, like you would find in the chart supplement, you can click them and it'll bring it right open right there on screen, which is fantastic, by the way. Um, I've seen some practice tests that either don't do it or like this, they try to, but it's just not as nice. So I really enjoy this one. And if you click it again, it collapses and allows you to keep moving on. Here's the timer I was talking about. So it's kind of nice if you're looking to see how much time you have left or how much time has passed, you get an idea for that. It shows all questions on a single screen, which I like. Um, sometimes if you're taking an assessment and it's one question and you have to load a new screen, that sometimes can cause problems and it kind of breaks up the flow. And I've even had some of those uh, browser sessions crash on me and I lost my progress. So um, I, I do like how this one is set up on an all one single page without any breaks. So yeah, that's great. And these are practice test questions, but I want to show you um, a couple more things like I said, to help you get more out of this. And this is what I ended up doing after multiple hours of playing around on this site and practicing, practicing um, what I kind of settled into with my habits of practicing with the King's Practice Exam. So I'm gonna hit submit test, even though I didn't actually answer anything. And here's my score, 0.0%. 0 
I didn't pass this practice test here, but when you scroll down, notice that it does show you the correct answer. So there you go, there's an answer key for you. That can be helpful in and of itself there. But if you notice the first question, question one, um, it tells you the answer, and then it tells you an explanation, uh, justification for why choice A is the correct answer. And then it also explains why B and C are incorrect. There's a lot of value there. And this course, this practice test, is kind of set up as an advertisement for the service that they're trying to sell you. Uh, King Schools does have a course, and if you read a little bit here, it says try risk-free. They're trying to get you to um, pay for their entire course so you have access to, you know, answer explanations like this for every single question on every single practice test that you generate. You got one here, but what you can do here, notice that if you scroll to the bottom and hit retake, it actually generates a new test and you can hit submit. And now you have the explanation, rationale, whatever, for a new question. Every time you hit retake or retest, it generates not just a new test, but like a completely new randomized version of a new test there that's pulling from their, their question banks. Their question banks are huge. I have, I've gone through and just looked at the weather. Let's go back there a second. Back to this section here, if you uncheck everything and just do weather, which by the way is another great way to study. If you know that you're a little bit rusty or weak on your weather knowledge and how to read METARs and everything like that, just practice generating tests with the weather category checked alone and then practice those. But let's just do one here. One question, weather. There we go. You don't even need to answer it. Of course, you can try that if you want, but here's the explanation. You can now read an actual test question or an authentic style test question, see what the correct answer is, see why that's the correct answer, and then also find out a little bit more about those incorrect answers. There's a, it's a lot more here than just memorization. Memorization is not a very good way to learn something. In the short term, yeah, sure, it works. But long term, if you're looking to actually acquire new knowledge here that will stick for, you know, getting recertified down the road or just having this knowledge to be a better pilot and to be safer, this is a better way to do it, in my opinion here. So not just memorizing what the correct answer is, but just learning why it's correct and why the other ones are incorrect and be able to, being able to talk about it. So sure, there we go. You can copy and paste that if you want save it somewhere, maybe make some flashcards, open up Quizlet, paste these in and make some flashcards. Um, anything like that can work. It takes a little bit of time, but the more work you do in it, the more you're going to absorb. Now let's retake again. Here's another weather question. Remember, we only had the weather category checked here, but I hit retest and there's a new weather question. So it's pulling from the weather question bank, which I have played around with this quite a bit and I have found over 100 unique weather related questions in their question, question banks. And you don't need to pay for their course to have access to the full question bank. You get all of it. They're just kind of limiting. The main limitation is that you only get that explanation or rationale for that first question that you generate, but you can keep retaking it and you get that for every single one that you do and it's random so you can eventually see it for all of them. So. That really worked for me, and it's a lot of good information out there. It's not just saying choice A is correct. So there you go. Now let me go back here to the beginning and just remind you here of, let's see here. You can choose one, all of them, three of them, two of them, doesn't matter. Just remember that you can kind of fine tune and customize the kind of assessment that you're going to be creating there. And I want to show you another thing here, just something to keep in mind. Let's go to sectional charts. One of the most challenging types of questions that you'll get on the part 107 exam are questions relating to sectional charts, especially ones that have you referring to actual sectional charts where you may need a magnifying glass and you're looking at very small print. Uh, this question here is talking about a TFR here, so this is not a good example. Let's do another one, start a test. Here we go, refer to figure 26, here it is. Something you may not know about these figures, um, 
Generally, when you see them on a practice test like this, the figure 26, um, it's going to be the same for any chart supplement guide that you may be looking at. So whether you have an actual printed chart supplement guide, which you can find on Amazon, or if you found a PDF of one, which you can also find, I'll throw a link to one of those in the description. Figure 26 that this question is referring to is the same figure that you'll see in the actual chart supplement listed as figure 26. What they did was they just scanned it and added it to their question banks. So notice here when I hit submit test, figure 26 is no longer clickable. So it's not gonna be of, of much value to you if you're trying to practice this um, over and over and you can't actually see figure 26 because the test is no longer active. Just look up figure 26 online, go to a PDF of a chart supplement or grab a guide and have it yourself. Um, again, check the link in the description. I will have that for you. So that way, if you are practicing these, the hardest questions, in my opinion anyway, are these sectional chart ones for a lot of people. Um, you're gonna to wanna to reference those figures. Okay, uh, the next thing I wanna talk about here, uh, let's go down to, um, I think I may have actually hit most of the stuff here. So, percentages. Going back to, here we go. These six categories that you can select reflect the actual testing categories that you'll see on the actual exam, that's no surprise. But um, one thing you wanna keep in mind are the actual percentages of the questions that will, act, how many of each question category will appear on the actual test, or at least the average number. All right, so here are the average percentages for each section as they appear on the FAA Part 107 exam. Regulations and classification, aviation weather, airspace, loading and performance, and operations. Real quick here, you don't wanna spend, you know, a large percentage of your time studying in loading and performance, just because that's the smallest tested category. You're gonna to wanna to spend more time here in regulations and classification and airspace because those take up the majority of the actual 107 exam. You don't wanna to forget to look at the information in the others, just don't spend as much time. You have to gauge your time and kind of Proport, do it proportionately to the percentages so you're actually taking time where it should be spent. Going back to the King's exam here, you can see that the categories in here directly match up with those categories that I just showed you, so just a little tip there. So that's it, really. I just wanted to take the time to show that to you. Um, again, this is King Schools, which, I mean, they put together a really fantastic assessment builder here. It helped me pass the first time. Hopefully it's helped you and will help you uh, get this information down. And with that extra trick of, you know, looking at that first question and finding that explanation for the correct and incorrect answers and then reloading the test, it's kind of a little bit of a sneaky way to get that without paying anything, but it's there, so why not use it? Um, I'd hate to end the video without putting a plug in for Kings here. I'm not affiliated with Kings in any way. I just appreciate the, the website that they have here. But if you ever do um, want to, you know, look into actually purchasing uh, their content, so you don't have to kind of do this backdoor way, um, this is what you would do. You would go to, what is it, Learn More? And they want $129 for all access, um, lifetime access for all of their hundreds of hours of video content and their you know tests and like I said it would generate that rationale for each and every question on the practice test not just the first one um, so there it is I would imagine that their courses are good I haven't done them myself but I do appreciate their content and I think my favorite thing about them are their they're just massive testing banks so um, Hopefully this is helpful for you and good luck if you're getting your part 107 exam scheduled soon and you're planning on taking it. Um, it's an awesome journey. I've had my exam for about a year and a half now or at my certification and I've done a fair amount of jobs with my drone, probably about you know, five to 10 so far in that year and a half um, and that keeps increasing. So it is, it's quite the journey and I just hope that as many of you can get into that as possible, legally of course. Um, with your part 107 certification. So if you like this video, if you got something out of it, please consider liking, subscribe to the channel. I have some 
drone content releasing pretty much every week, every day sometimes, depending on what I've got going on. And um, I do flight videos, I do reviews, I do weird stuff, I do fun stuff. I just, if it's drone related and I feel like recording it, it's usually going on my channel. So stick around if you wanna see some of that other stuff. Uh, subscribe, ring the bell, all the stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much.